Hello there everyone, welcome back to James Redman TV and welcome to another Redman Roundup. Guys, we are having an episode of Midfielders. Midfielders is one of those markets in the world right now where it's very narrow, there doesn't seem to be many options and I see people saying to me the midfielders that we're linked with and we're going to talk about a couple of them in this video. We're also going to touch on Jude going to Real Madrid because let's be honest, I think about 90% of the people have got broken hearts over the stuff that's happened with Jude Bellingham. Especially with how heavily reported and how heavy the agenda was on Bellingham coming to Liverpool. According to numerous Liverpool journalists and reliable journalists who all ended up backing out about three months before the end of the season. Um, and things can change. There's not to say that there was never any concrete interest. Um, but in hindsight, you feel like a bit of a fool. Now we've got two new names. Well, actually, three of you include the one we've just signed in McAllister. Then you've got the two new names, which is Kevin Taram who currently plays for Nice, and then you've got Manu Kone, who now currently plays at Tulu on loan, but he's actually at Borussia Mönchengladbach. Now, first and foremost, here's what I'm going to say about these two players. In fact, I, I, I'll let you know what I think about the players, but I want you to let me know what you think, because I do not dispute that there's going to be people in the comments down below who know more about these guys than what I do. What I do know, and from what I've seen, they look like nice footballers, Taram especially, Taram's an interesting case, and it seems that he's being talked about in the 40 million region. He's played in the French League his whole career. He's only 22 years of age. He was born in 2001, same year as me. When footballers become the same age as you, it's a little bit strange. You know, I, I remember I started getting the feeling when I was like 16, 17. Do you remember Hakim Pastor or Mastore, who played for... AC Milan, he done that skills trick video with Neymar, he was a guy like, that was the first time where I was like, well, there's a footballer my age, he was like 15, I was 15, it was just one of those things, he plays in like Morocco or something now, but anyway, back to Taram, someone who's played in the French League his whole career, what I like about French football, even though it's called a farmer's league and this, that, they develop great footballers, not just now, but have done in previous generations, that's why France always do well in national competitions, because if their first team isn't going to win, the second team will, do you remember when there was, I think it was the, the under-23s World Cup, this was before the most recent one, it might have been the under-23s Euros actually, or under-21s Euros, their defence was Upamecano and Kanate, and I believe Leipzig finished second in the Bundesliga last season, it, it just goes to show how strong French football has got to where there's a core. Now, people can say there's reasons behind why and, you know, like um, how many footballers are born in the country if you want to make that a debate. Idea, the idea is, is that these players go through the academy and become the footballers that they do. It goes through the French structure. That's what taram has gone through. He's also uh, made a cap already for the French national team. I've just mentioned how stacked that national team is and he's made an appearance for it. So based on what I'm seeing... I like the profile of where he's being created and where he's being influenced. I like the fact that he's coming through French football because, I may, again, I mentioned the midfielders, you know, Zinedine Zidane, you know, what Paul Pogba could have been, that type of idea. I, I really like that idea, uh, that, that concept about this player. I like his age. He's young. 40 million seems good. He's currently on very low wages at Nice. He's on 14k a week. Even if we quadruple that wage, he will be on less than what Oxley chamberlain and Naby Keita was on. It makes a lot of sense. And you cannot think from, oh, do you know when fans say, it's not my money, so I don't care? That means you're now being unrealistic. So in one breath, you'll say, it's not my money, I don't care. The next sentence, you'll say, oh, well, don't say we're going to sign Kimmich because that's an unrealistic transfer. So how come you're being unrealistic in one manner, but then you're saying it's wrong to be unrealistic in another? You have to look at it from the owner's point of view. The type of profile that we want isn't the people in the ready-made field, the established names like Kimmich, for instance, what is in our field is the other ones where the potential gems. Kefren Taram looks like a potential gem. He's already accomplished quite a bit at a young age. He's already played for France. He's only going to be about 40 million. He's on very low wages, which suits our wage structure, which matters. Why not go out there and get him? And then if in four or five years he becomes so boss and he wants so much money, we'll worry about that when it gets to it. Let's get the investment in right now. So I like the idea of Kefren Taram. That being said, haven't watched much of him. Seeing highlights, can't make a judgment off highlights, therefore I need you to talk to me about this player. Next player, also 22 years of age, also born in 2001, um, is Man uh, Manuel Kuduo Kone. I should have just said Manu Kone, but I tried to be fancy. Either way, 
very similar. Went through French football, played for PSG uh, in the youth academy. So when it, between 2012 and 2015, he was an academy player for PSG. He's had a few spells at different various French clubs to Lou or too loose, being one of them. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach, he made a move to them in 2021. One thing I like about the Bundesliga, the Bayer Leverkusens, the Borussia Mönchengladbachs, they're really making a big, big claim on signing players in the French and English region, and they're bringing them to Germany, they're making them their own type of players, and you're seeing what's happening, you know, you look at the likes of Moussa Diaby, for instance, you see how um, uh, Coleman has elevated since he's went to the Bundesliga, a lot of these players build up systematic things from the Bundesliga and translate it for the rest of their career, that's why you'll see someone like Ilkay Gundogan being able to maintain his form throughout his career, because, you know, Erlen Haaland going from the Bundesliga and then scoring more goals in the Premier League, it's a very good foundation foundation for players to come from the Bundesliga to the Prem and then be able to showcase what they've learned and I like the two play he's he's came through French football and now he's spending the earlier studenty years in German football therefore I think he's getting grass from both sides there he's had a good team with a good culture he's been in French football I wouldn't mind him coming to Liverpool let's just say this now I don't know the rumour fee about what he's going to be I don't know how much he is I don't know how much better he is than Taram one thing I'll say, I prefer Taram. Based on the resumes that I've seen so far, I haven't seen the players too much, so I can't say. That's why I want to leave it down to you to basically sway me one way or the other on who you would prefer. Now, you might be saying, but James, you said we were linked with both. Why are you asking me for a preference when you said we could get both players? I'm saying it because we're not going to get both players. I, I, I just, I, It's one of those things where I feel like it's very, very easy to get a young pair and say link them or they are now linked to one club and we're going to get both of those players. I'm just not too sure about that. It usually means we might get one of these and then one other name uh, will likely come through the door in terms of, of a midfielder because I am confident we're going to get three. I'm confident we're going to get three. I just don't know if it's going to be these two plus McAllister who we've already got. Let me know who you think in the comments down below. Also, let me know the price of Kone because I'm a little bit in two places about the price. I'm just not too sure. I haven't looked too much into the player. Last thing I want to talk about before we end this episode of the Redman Roundup. Smash a like if you haven't already, just because gets the video out there, more helps the channel. Jude Bellingham is going to Real Madrid. Deal's done. He's bought a house in Real Madrid. In Real Madrid? In Madrid, and now he's joining Real Madrid. Here's the thing about Jude Bellingham. He's just got player of the season in the Bundesliga. Missed out on the Bundesliga. by goal difference. Insane scenes and, and, and crazy precautions that were taken throughout the last couple of games. And he missed out on the Bundesliga. I was very sad because Marco Royce didn't didn't get it. And Marco Royce deserves a Bundesliga, let's be honest with ourselves. I never really got too confident with the Bellingham stuff, but I got more confident than what I actually should have. I got to a point where I was thinking, there's actually some really reliable stuff saying this. But then I would end the sentence with, what is the case now in what was January? will not be the case in March or April or whatever. And it's very important to see the position where Liverpool have ended up, the how much Real Madrid would have actually ended up wanting Jude Bellingham because they probably wanted to see the performance and the progress of their own players before they go and spend 100 plus million on another pro uh, prospect who has also got a good resume behind them. Because, you know, Real Madrid have still got to be cautious just because they're letting go of players doesn't mean... They can just go and spend £100 million and that's fine. You know, you'll look at someone like Eden Hazard. It's a transfer that can hold you back for quite a while because £100 million plus transfers. I mean, look at Phil Coutinho to Barca. It just weren't good. I don't even think Barcelona have still got that situation sorted out with the money. So, I, I, I'm looking I'm looking up Jude Bellingham to Real Madrid and I'm thinking, it's a good move. It, you know, they're building the culture. They've got Camavinga. They've got Tushamani. You know, if these players keep evolving the way that the potential says that they can, then them two would Bellingham. I mean, if you do the two plus two logic, it just makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I don't know, I just think it's one of those. Bellingham's a nice player. He hasn't grew up through the English system, so I think he can adapt in other leagues differently to how English players usually do in La Liga. But the question I want to ask is, what is the legacy now for Bellingham? Do we ever see Bellingham in the Premier League? Because it's very rare you see a player at his peak that's what I want to rephrase the question to. Not will we ever see Bellingham in the Prem, because if Birmingham get a new takeover and they get millionaire owners, best believe Jude Bellingham will probably join them when he's like 33, for instance. But right now, what I'm saying, 
Will he get in the Prem in his prime? Right now, he's not in his prime, but he could enter his prime. He could be in his prime. Wayne Rooney. <sighs> Young Wayne Rooney, mate. I, I would not hate the idea of that being prime, Wayne Rooney. But then you've got 2010 Wayne Rooney, and he was an absolute steroid head. He was unbelievable. But... What I'm saying is, Michael Owen, some players can have their peak at the, at the very young age. It's just people have the logic. You turn 26, 27, and that means you're now going into your peak. Ludicrous logic because you've got so many players who do get older, who never refine the form. Paul Pogba being another example. Ravel Morrison. And, and there's external circumstances. It's not to shit on these players. I'm just simply saying, because of those circumstances... You might be the best footballer right now, but you might not be in a couple of years because you might get family issues, God forbid, or you might end up getting um, health issues or anything along those lines. It can change the course of the career. So, assuming everything goes well, no injuries, everything's fine, he lives a good life, Jude Bellingham, what does he go and achieve at Real Madrid? If it's the maximum, if it's Champions Leagues and La Ligas, do we ever see Jude Bellingham in his prime in the Premier League? That's what I want to question because, and if not, does that change the dynamic of the English game to more English players then say, you know what, I'm looking at Tammy Abraham, I'm looking at uh, Jude Bellingham, for instance, two, two different examples, but you get the idea. English footballers who were going out of the league and thriving elsewhere, you know, even Luchman, um, Adiola Luchman, I think his name is, uh, the guy who played for Everton, and uh, uh, who was the other club that he played for? I can't remember. Either way, he goes there and, and he's doing well now, he's playing in the team regularly, he's getting a couple of goals, he's looking nice. Will that now become the blueprint of English players now being more inclined to want to go elsewhere? Because Jude Bellingham, I think this is going to be a move that's successful for him. Because if he keeps going the way he has been, he's going to be absolutely unbelievable, as I mentioned. You know, you look at the players who were in the Bundesliga, he never even won the league. <laughs> and he got the player of the season, and that's a league that consists of Sané, Mane, and Coman, and Muller. Uh, insane talent, even in his own team. You've got Marco Royce, who I don't know how good he is on a consistent basis anymore, but he's still a top, top player. So I think it's going to be a good move for Jude for success. I think it's going to be a great move for Jude for financial benefit. I think it's going to be a great move for Jude in terms of elevating him to an extra superstar. I think it's actually great for English football that we've got someone representing us as a Galactico, if you will. I mean, and when I say us, obviously... Scousers have got the dynamic with English football where it's like this. But what I'm saying is the English quota still fits into Liverpool's FC squad. You still need English players. To elevate the game, you probably need examples like Jude Bellingham to add to the credibility of football. You know, David Beckham done it a little bit. Michael Owen tried, failed. Now, Bale went there, overachieved massively. Now, can Jude Bellingham do you know, something similar. That's the question I ask. Let me know in the comments down below. Or did he make a mistake and should have he joined the mighty Reds? You know what I mean. Guys, love to you and your mothers. Smash a like if you wish. Subscribe if you want to. And I love every single one of you. See it all in a bit. Peace.